Module 9 Relational Summary Lecture, GWE1. From the founding of our nation until quite recently, climate change was going on, deliberately. Far from being seen as a bad thing, climate change was openly discussed as a desirable way to conquer the West, to terraform America, and make it more suitable for European colonists. Even Benjamin Franklin, who was an astute meteorologist, and Thomas Jefferson, the gentleman farmer, talked and wrote about the desire of the early settlers to clear the forests, drain the swamps, and plow the land, specifically to make what they thought would be a more salubrious climate, more like England's green and pleasant land. The one sung about in William Blake's Jerusalem, considered England's most popular patriotic song and second national anthem. You know the lyrics, don't you? These lyrics were written between 1804 and 1808, and the sentiment was something all English speakers were abuzz about, even as they witnessed the dark satanic mills created by the early Industrial Revolution, its deforestation and early turn to coal. At that time, America was officially just 32 years old, around the age of Jesus when he walked, and the mythology of a wild west to conquer suggested a fresh start was available for those who felt that the Jerusalem project in England might be failing. If only they could get the climate of the American continent to cooperate. If only they could get rid of those pesky, dark, damp forests and swamps and those pesky natives who were so well adapted to them. The early settlers and the political class really believed that they could make America their new holy land. They had no understanding of how the warm Gulf Stream waters make England so nice. England, which sits at the same latitude as much of Canada. As an article in BuzzFeed praising a certain warm oceanic current explains it, Quote, even the southernmost point of Britain is further north than the northernmost part of the contiguous United States, while London lies further north than almost all major Canadian cities, including Vancouver, Montreal, Quebec City, and Toronto. Without that warm oceanic current, which climate change is disrupting, by the way, England wouldn't be a green and pleasant land at all. But the early English settlers of America, being scientifically compromised or just plain ignorant, thought the problem was forests and wetlands, and believed that by removing them, they could make their New England just like home and even better. They were wrong. But it wasn't for lack of trying. You see, we've always known about climate change. We just thought that whatever changes the conquerors and colonists made were good things, because we had that belief in what the imperialists called manifest destiny. As the History Channel points out, quote, many of these late 19th and early 20th century settlers lived by the superstition that rain follows the plow. Emigrants, land speculators, politicians, and even some scientists believed 
that homesteading and agriculture would permanently affect the climate of the semi-arid Great Plains region, making it more conducive to farming." End quote. So imagine that. It turns